Holy Gospel according to John, the sixth chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Jesus said to them, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Then the Jews began to complain about him because he said, I am the bread that came down from heaven. They were saying, Is not this Jesus, the son of Joseph, whose father and mother we know? How can he now say, I have come down from heaven? Jesus answered them, Do not complain among yourselves. No one can come to me unless drawn by the Father who sent me. And I will raise that person up on the last day. It is written in the prophets, and they shall all be taught by God. Everyone who has heard and learned from the Father comes to me. Not that anyone has seen the Father except the one who is from God. He has seen the Father. Very truly, I tell you, whoever believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the man in the wilderness and they died. This is the bread that comes down from heaven, so that one may eat of it and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats of this bread will live forever, and the bread that I will give for the life of the world is my flesh. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to your Christ. You may be seated. Give your hearts a moment for centering these words from Isaiah 55. Why do you spend your money for that which is not bread, and your labor for that which does not satisfy? Listen carefully to me and eat what is good and delight yourselves in rich food. We're here because of the grace of God, and the grace of God does not only benefit you. Of course, it benefits you, that goes without saying almost, but it also benefits God, because as God graces you, God becomes absorbed with your life and your future as well. It happens every time we eat the bread of life. So have you ever rescued a, an animal, a stray cat in the neighborhood, an injured bird that fell out of a tree or something like that? Uh, you know that when you do that, um, if you care for hunger especially and mend the wounds that that animal may have experienced, two things may happen. Number one, if you put out additional milk for a stray cat, that cat is yours. There's a bonding that happens in that moment, and no matter what you say, I can tell you stories about my house, there's a bonding of that animal to you. You know how that works. But there's also a sense of bonding of you to that animal. You get connected to their story too, in small or large ways. When I was serving a church in Glendale, one day I heard a noise in the fireside room, and I went to investigate, and it turns out a pigeon had fallen down the chimney and was trapped above the flue, making all sorts of noise rattling against the metal inside of the chimney. So I carefully reached in and popped the flue open and <coughs> things fell down on the gas logs and just sat there. So I thought, okay, what do I do now? Because I know I'm not going to reach in there and try and grab it. And I know I don't want this dirty bird flying around the room and getting the place a mess. So I pulled the chain and opened up the screen. And I went across and I opened up the two big sliding glass doors. Nothing. Just sat there. So then I went and I got a yardstick and I tried to persuade it out, and I did. And it flew up and around the room a couple of times and landed on a ledge six inches above the door where freedom was, and just sat there, and just sat there, and just sat there. Somehow it didn't know that right underneath was the path of freedom. So then I went and found the kitchen, got some bread, made a little trail of breadcrumbs from the carpet out to the patio, and uh, watched, and it flew down, made some of the breadcrumbs. The door was right there, flew back up, it must have taken several hours, and finally when I wasn't even around, it finally saw, oh, the breadcrumbs lead me to freedom, and uh, off it went. Now, I have to say that after that experience, um, I'm pretty sure that the bird didn't feel any connection to me. I didn't get a postcard back in the mail saying, 
thanks for letting me go, and by the way, it was a delicious lunch. I got no such thing like that. But I found that I was somehow thinking about that bird a lot, <laughs> wondering, you know, what was in this little bird brain when it flew away, what stories was it telling its friends, um, all that kind of thing. And um, I didn't use the experience somehow to inspire a newsletter article for the church. Almost 40 years later, I still feel connected a little bit to that crazy bird that flew in the door. So if you have a sense of what was going on in that fireside room, in that little drama, now I'd like you to put yourself in the place of God as God looks at us. A bunch of pigeons who have fallen down the chimney, found ourselves where we don't belong, gotten ourselves dirty and then trapped in a situation that we can't escape from, and uh, that's us in a certain sense. It's God who reaches in and opens the flue, pulls the screen back, opens the doors, and spreads bread for us. Bread for us today, again, so that we can find our way to freedom and get back on track with our lives. So today when we take some more bread and wine into ourselves, God is going to be absorbed into us, but we are also, in a certain sense, absorbed into God. Because God is more than just casually interested in what happens to all of us in our lives. Because whether it's just one person or it's thousands of people, God takes the very same care. We see that in the story of Elijah. There's one guy, desperate, afraid, fearing for his life, hungry, fatigued, despairing, and God sends some bread to this lost little bird, this hungry little bird. Not bread comes exactly, but the angel made sure he had something to eat, so they had strength to get back on the track and go where he was supposed to go. And in John 6, we've been spending weeks now after Jesus fed 5,000 hungry little birds, all of them like sheep without a shepherd, it says, all of them like pigeons that have fallen in the fireplace chimney, dirty in a spot where we don't belong, struggling to get out, wondering how we can get free. Uh, but once fed, able to resume their life's journey. And whether it's one or 5,000, whether it happened 3,000 years ago with Elijah or happens today again, when we gather around the table, receive some bread and wine, we are going to take some of God with us, some of God's interest in us. You probably know this already, and obviously you are in this room, but there's four doors, one, two, one down the hallway, and then the main doors, or five if you count both wooden doors. Five doors that lead into this building. And I think that's symbolic. Symbolic of how the same Spirit calls, nobody ever decides to go to church, the Spirit calls you and you answer the call. But you all came here from different places, through different doors, if you will. Some of you came through the, I got a spring in my step door. Some of you came through the, I hope nobody liked this here, expecting the same old thing door. Okay, that could happen. Some of you came through the, oh God, what a week I had door. If you came through the spring in your step door, I hope nothing happens in this hour to take any spring away from your step. If you came through the, oh, what a week I had door, I hope that something happens in this hour that takes some of that away and puts you, puts a little spring back where it belongs. And I'm reminding, remembering a time back in the days of the old Red Book. This is going back a few years now because we put that one away in 1978. But the service always started the very same way. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and so on. Well, I was a brand new pastor, newly ordained. Of course, I knew everything. And I thought, especially for the crowd that came in through the expecting the same old thing door, I'm going to do something different. So I thought to myself, Beloved in the Lord, what does that mean? Okay. So I stood up there like the pastor had stood up there every week for hundreds of years, and I said, everyone here is loved by God, which I thought was a good translation, and you should have seen that head snap up. I'm surprised glasses didn't fall out or fall off and heart attacks happen. Um, I'm, reminded, I'm reminded of that story because the way we started worship this morning, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all is not a wish. 
It's God's gift to you. It's one of the ways that God gets into you and gets absorbed in you. And in today's affirmation of baptism service, we were reminded that God has taken us into who God is. And our final prayer was to thank you, God, for making us, for absorbing us into your life and making us part of your life today and your life forever. So in a little while, God's going to scatter some more breadcrumbs for us lost and, and mangy pigeons. And um, so that hopefully, if you came in with a spring in your step, that will just get supported and, and affirmed. And hopefully it will it will take some of the old brother off the week that you just had and send you into a new one. Uh, but whatever state you're in, except if you're in the spring in your step, we, we won't mess with that. But otherwise, I hope you don't go back out through the same door you came in on, if you know what I mean. Especially if you came in with the horrible week, don't go back through that door and take everything that you brought in back with you. Because when you're sent from here, you're going to be sent with a choice. You're going to be asked to make every moment that's ahead for this week ahead. You're going to be asked to make an act of will to choose to believe what we've said together what we've heard together, what we've experienced together in this time and place. Will you choose to believe what the bread says to you about who you are, about who God is, and how God is in your life? Because on the other side of the bread is the God who left the trail of bread comes for you, who wants you to find your way back, and who is absorbed in your life. And once that happens, God doesn't just turn